What's up y'all? I am making this quick video for all the people that ask me why I'm eating in the way that I do so that I can explain it a little bit better. Basically, hundreds of millions of people, if not billions, are suffering physically and mentally due to what they eat. Humans are the only animal that has no idea what their natural diet is. Every animal in nature has a natural diet and they know exactly what they're supposed to eat so that they don't have any physical or mental problems. If humans were in a zoo, what would their diet be? Would it be vegan? Would it be cooked meat? Would it be raw meat? Would it be omnivore? We just don't have any idea. First, I'll start by talking about Weston Price's work. The reason that his work is important is because the people he studied were eating in the same way for hundreds or thousands of years. So this is generational knowledge and they create perfect human specimens, as he liked to call it. Every time one of these groups of people added the foods of commerce into their diet, which were sugar, flour, vegetable oils, canned foods, and stuff like that, their health would deteriorate quickly, just as um, we have seen with everybody that we know. And the people, they live without doctors, they have no dentist, they have no hospitals, no police, they don't use supplements, they just live in nature, they get all of the vitamins and minerals that they need from the food that they eat and they do not need anything else. So we'll watch a couple clips. How old are you? What are you? A number of the teeth have decayed cavities in them. And that has happened because he's not eating enough fish or not getting enough milk. Say, you're a fine, big, strong fellow. How old are you? Why? You look as though you're a giant. My, my. Where'd you come from? Barbara. Well, that's the place. Did you get lots of fish when you were a little boy? Yeah. That's the stuff that makes good bodies. If everybody do that, the most universal disease in the world is the decay of the teeth. And unfortunately, we have not known the cause until we've gone to the primitive people to find how they prevent tooth decay. Our difficulty is that we are adding too much white flour and sugar and do not get enough of the foods that carry the minerals and vitamins. When the primitive people adopt the food of modern civilization, their teeth decay just as ours do. Dr. Price discovered a substance he called Activator X. It belongs in the fat-soluble group. He recognized that the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and F had been deficient in practically every case of active tooth decay. He found that an essential characteristic of the successful dietary programs of primitive societies related to a liberal source of the fat-soluble activator group, such as is found in seafood, especially fish roe, bird's eggs, butter fat of mammals' milk, organs of animals, and insects. Even though the diets of primitive people differed greatly as to type and source, all diets provided a large increase in water-soluble vitamins over modern diets by at least a factor of four, and at least 10 times more of the fat-soluble vitamins and mineral activators than the displacing diets of commerce. Quality rather than quantity was the important factor. Since these foods were unrefined, they also supplied from two to eight times the minimum daily requirements of calcium and phosphorus, and up to 28 times that of magnesium. So all of the healthy people that he found were getting a lot of fat-soluble vitamins from animal foods, animal fat, saturated fat is the superfood, and it seems like the grains were just added for extra calories because people haven't always been agricultural anyway, so that's even newly added. Would it be possible then for human beings to eat a diet of only animal products, just protein and animal fat? Um, this next dude, Stephenson, he went to Alaska to live with Inuit, and this is what he had to say about the situation. Well, this raises the whole question of, uh, of food then. Um, surely, surely there's, there's some 
Uh, you yourself must have longed for a green vegetable once in a while. Well, I did at first. Uh, I, um, my first experience was that a ship that was supposed to meet me didn't meet me. Mm. And I had to become a guest of the Eskimos, and for four and a half months, I lived on literally nothing but fish and water. Well, we had some uh, blubber, some uh, polar bear blubber, but apart mm. from that. And at the end of four and a half months, I was healthier than I'd never been before. I and see. enjoying every meal and uh, feeling fine. And this is on an exclusive meat diet? Yes, that was exclusive fish in this case. Okay. I have since then spent more than six, aggregated more than six years, on red meat. That is uh, seal meat, caribou meat, muskox meat, polar bear, grizzly bear, and so on. You have to have fat with a lean. Uh, lean and fat together uh, make a perfect diet. A balanced diet. A balanced diet. Balanced diet. You have everything you need if you have both lean and fat. So he clearly shows that humans can live healthily and for a long period of time on nothing but flesh and animal fat. The word Eskimo actually means eaters of raw meat. And for the question of raw versus cooked food, we can come to Pottinger's cats here. We'll watch a couple clips of what he found out when he was testing raw versus cooked diets on cats. The cats chosen for the study were apparently in perfect health. They were kept in open air pens with a yard four feet wide, seven feet high, and 12 feet long. They were fed cooked meat scraps from the sanitarium, which included internal organ meats and bones, along with some additional raw milk and cod liver oil. According to all known standards, this diet provided an optimal amount of nutrients. The cat seemed healthy. The adrenalectomy technique had been proven appropriate. Nevertheless, the study suffered from an unexplainably high mortality rate. Then came that uncalculated twist of events. For some reason, many more cats were provided for the study than could ever have been fed using leftover cooked meat scraps from the sanitarium. So raw meat scraps from a nearby meat packing plant replaced the cooked meat in the diets of certain cats. Within a very short period of time, the operative mortality rate of that group dropped significantly. The raw meat fed animals began to survive the adrenalectomy extremely well, and they continued on in a superior quality of health. Pottinger had unexpectedly glimpsed a new facet of fundamental nutrition, and he was compelled to respond with a series of studies that would span the next ten years of his medical career. Needless to say, when people from the nearby community heard of the study, more cats were mysteriously abandoned on the Pottinger doorstep than could ever be used in the experiment. Pottinger was intrigued by what he termed heat labile factors, or put as an experimental question, he asked, does the cooking process somehow render food nutritionally deficient, causing eventual physiological degeneration? Although there were two different studies, one focusing on milk and the other on meat, the results of both studies were nearly identical. Over the next 10-year period, Pottinger observed and recorded numerous physiological changes in the experimental animals and their offspring. So Pottinger proved that cooking meat and cooking milk both changed the food and of course we're not the same as cats but it still proves that heat messes with the nutrients in the food. The cats that were eating the cooked meat are supposed to be extremely healthy and happy. They're supposed to be knocking shit off tables. They're supposed to be screaming at the top of their lungs at three in the morning and they just simply were not doing so. So far, we can see that healthy humans need animal fat and protein. They can live on just animal fat and protein. Heat definitely changes the nutritional content of the food, but can humans even live on raw meat? Wouldn't we immediately die a horrible death if we ate raw meat? We can check out a couple more clips coming up here. I tell you, dear friends, neither words nor pictures are adequate to describe what follows. But if you can imagine this, at the same time, both horror movie and heartwarming. A mix of blood-spattered butchery and loving nourishment. A meal like I've never experienced. Yeah. Hey, we got it filled. 
The meal starts off like countless others around the world. A few words of thanks for the food before us. But then, dear viewer, things take a different tack. I can't wait to eat the bread. Oh yeah, that's the best part? Yes. There's laughter, pride, excitement, like a Thanksgiving dinner. Frequent exclamations of yay and ooh. His dad zips open the belly and collects the blood. Junior grabs for a rib. Grandma cracks open a skull and digs out some brain. And suddenly the room is tearing that thing apart like a meat-filled pinata. Every part a treat. We're keeping the blood for stools. The Inuit waste nothing. They use every part of the animal. To make sure I get the full experience, I'm offered a piece of everything. The men grab a strong young cow and tie a tourniquet around its neck to find a vein. A special arrow is used, one to only make a small incision, so not to permanently harm the cow. A dried and smoked gourd, called a calabash, is used to collect the blood. Then cow dung is rubbed onto the cut to seal it. The local men and boys begin drinking without hesitation. Oh my god. All the way. Woo! Okay, sure, those people can eat raw meat because they're used to it. What about somebody like me who grew up eating nothing but Cheez-Its and pasteurized orange juice? I'll probably get sick if I do it. Well, here we can come to Ajina's Vonder Planets. He was a raw vegan and then he ended up switching to a raw meat diet and he ate that way for decades and taught thousands of other people to do the same and his health improved he was fine and he didn't die until he was killed by a big grill by throwing him off a balcony in thailand you went strict vegan for a while what were some of the consequences you were seeing for your body well because i had had anemia you know mm -hmm. the blood cancer and the bone cancer right I didn't have to be on it but two and a half years before I went down to 98 pounds. Mm -hmm. My bones started disintegrating. I got in uh, leukemia again and uh, I was deteriorating. So I decided, you know, I was living on a bicycle outdoors, which is very stressful. You know, the temperature changes from day to night it can be 80 degrees. Right. Wind storms, sun storms, rain storms, blizzards was all through it with my living on a bicycle and a sleeping bag outdoors. Mm -hmm. So it was very stressful and they talk about the stress of a job or indoors or with emotional stress. They don't know what stress is until you've lived outdoors. Right. That's stress. That is and stress. People used to mm -hmm. fare that all the time without central heat and air conditioning. Right. That was a normal part of life a hundred years ago. Right. But now everybody's you got it easy as far as I'm concerned. But living in that as a fruitarian, strict fruitarian, no lacto, no ovo, no meats at all, I disintegrated heavily. So I chose to die. Because now the cancer's back and it's like, what, what right. am I, I've tried everything. I was aching in every joint. Yeah. The temperature dropped below 50 degrees. I mean, at 50 degrees, I started having severe joint pain. Mm -hmm. By the time at 48, I was crippled in excruciating pain. 
I couldn't move. So you were going to die. So you chose yeah. your, your way. You I chose to fast to death. To fast I, to death. Yeah. I picked an old Indian burial ground in California. I bicycled all the way from, well, I couldn't bicycle much anymore, but I was in Alaska at the time living with the Eskimos. And all the Indian tribes, I'd lived with four Indian tribes, and all of them suggested I eat raw meat. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, they're just trying to kill the white boy. <laughs> Revenge, mm -hmm. you know, because... Again, I had I'd been brainwashed into believing, even though raw foods were good, with the vagotomy, which is the severing of the vagus nerve and no hydrochloric acid in the stomach, I would die, I would get a parasite and die. So you, this was heavily entrenched in your mind that if you ate raw meat, you were going to die Correct. of yes. poisoning. Exactly. But you tell us this next part of the well, story. I was on, in this old Indian burial ground outside, you know, at the foothills of the of a mountain range, uh, St. Martinez Mountain Range in, in Thermal, California. And uh, I was just drinking water uh, to keep the headaches away and was going to fast myself to death. I knew it would take probably 40, 60 days to do. So uh, right away, I, I happened to pick a, a, a vein of the, of the mountain where it led up into a canyon where a bunch of coyotes lived. Their den was up there. So they'd come down every night, wake me up, almost like clockwork at midnight, and do their howling and play games with me. By the, about the 10th or 12th day, back, you know, my mind's a little fuzzy from all the fasting from that period, but I was able to sense them going around where my campsite was down the wash. So I, the day that I sensed all 11 of them. The next night, they killed a jackrabbit and offered it to me, ripped it up and put it at my feet. And, uh, you know, I was also a philosophical vegetarian because I loved animals. Yeah, that's they as me kill for animals 20 years. As well, I being afraid of raw meat. Yes. So, uh, what went through my head at that moment, though, you know, the coyotes were offering it to me. And, you know, I'm looking at the Easter money. They ripped it open for me. It was all warm and squishy and everything at my yeah. feet. So I, um, what, this dialogue went through my head when I was probably about 10 years old. My brothers and cousins were going rabbit hunting. And my uncle was telling them that if they shot a wild rabbit, they needed to cook it till it was brown inside. It could be no pink meat at all because there's a microbe in wild rabbits that will take over your intestinal tract within 48 hours and you'll die, die of miserable, painful death within 48 hours. So, um, well, the pain would come within 24 hours, dead in 48. So I thought, oh, the coyotes are trying to help me die quickly. So I picked up the rabbit and I started eating. Of course, it came back up and I had to psych myself in, like at the dinner table when I was forced to eat vegetables that would make me projectile vomit. Mm -hmm. You know, I forced myself into that mental attitude and ate the rabbit. And by the time I got through probably the 12th or 15th bite, it tasted incredibly good to me. So I devoured almost three pounds, three and a half pounds. Wow. Coyotes shared the rest. They went away. I went back to my campsite to die, and I knew I was dying because I felt good. Right, like you were, time. you were having that lucid moment before death. Right, I, you know, yeah. I had I had had three near death experiences twice on an operating mm -hmm. table, where they had to revive me and on a uh, recreational drug experience, mm -hmm. and I had to be revived. So, I had left the body at those times, and when you leave the body like that, there's no pain. Mm -hmm. You lift, leave the pain with the body. So I was having that kind of experience, though I was walking in the body back to my campsite. So I knew I was dying. And I woke the next morning, and I'm still alive in my sleeping bag. I didn't go through any white tunnel or meet Buddha or Jesus or anybody. Uh, I was just still here in my body. And I had pretty good energy for the next three days, four days, and I didn't die. And nothing bad happened. So I said... Indians weren't lying to me at all. They were telling me raw meat. In conclusion, people can probably be pretty healthy on a large variety of diets as long as they're getting enough nutrients. The best ways to get nutrients would be eating organs, eating raw organs, eating raw dairy, um, 
as long as you keep your saturated fat high but also eating if you just want to eat nothing but raw meat i think that's also a fine way to go it's probably a better way to go than many of them i'm not sure what the perfect diet is i'm just trying to feel best day to day um i don't care how long i live but the ways that i was eating before was not making life enjoyable there was a lot of depression, pain, skin issues, and a bunch of other annoying shit. So I have just found a way that works for me and I'm learning every day and I'm always changing my mind about certain things, but I'm pretty deep into this and I'm not sure where to go next. So that's where I'm at for now and I'll do a part two at another time.